Hello everyone, uh, this is Oscar from the Trace Test team. Um, so in this video, I want to show you how we implemented the React editor um, for our uh, internal query language. So what you can see here is um, I'm within the, um, I'm looking at the demo Trace Test IO uh, website where we have our Trace Test demo. And as you can see, we I have an import request right here. It's a pull request to this specific Pokemon API endpoint. So if I start looking at the trace, I can activate the advanced mode by moving this switch, enabling this switch, or I can uh, just click add assertion and it will immediately uh, display the, the form. So from here, I can say, okay, I want to use the advanced mode and I, I will see the editor popping up. So right now I just have the signature selected with the specific spans that, that um, match the, sorry, with specific checks that match the, the span that I choose, that I chose, but I can keep editing or remove everything and start from scratch. So what I want to do is just have three examples to show you uh, the, the uh, flexibility of this editor and how it matches what we have on, on trace tests. So I'm deleting everything to so start from scratch. I just by typing S, I can see uh, two things, the autocomplete and also the invalid uh, error, invalid selector. So this is saying, hey, this is not a valid uh, selector for us to use on the backend. So if I click span, I will have my autocomplete ready. If I close the, the bracket, I will get the, the set of selectors um, uh, right here. So first, last, NTA child, what we discuss on the on the blog post, and from here I can start typing any type of um, attributes that, are, that belong to this uh, to any of the spans within this trace. So I can do trace test and do a span type, and I want to go for HTTP. So I remove the auto the auto complete completion um, value, and I say, hey, I want uh, HTTP. So as you can see, the graph at the, at the top is, is changing as well. And I can say, okay, I want, uh, so this is matching two, two spans because I, we have two different uh, HTTP spans right here. So what I can do is, okay, I just want the, the get request. So I do HTTP method and I say get. So this is only one matching one span and I can continue. Okay, now I want, <clears throat> I want database. So I, I can type database. I use the comma to say, okay, I want this plus or this other this other uh, selector. So I do database and I can do db.name equals pop and I can continue adding the rest of the selector. So I'm going to add a third one to select one uh, child selector, child span, sorry. So what I can do is to just type span. I'm just going to copy that one we have at the top. I want to go for post. And I want one child from this. So I want to do span. I want trace test type. Actually, I'm going for name. So what names do we have here? I want the validate one. So I go validate request. And what I can see here is that I have five. So if, if I open up the, the diagram, I will see that we have the database ones. One, two, three. The general one that is the valid request, that's the, the last one that we matched, and the HTTP one for the get request. So these are our four or five, sorry, spans that we're selecting using our editor language, uh, our query language by, by the React editor. As you can see, it's very flexible and it matches uh, what we have specified on our advanced selectors documentation. One, one last thing is I, I type something that uh, that doesn't exist, like hello equals one, two, three. I'm going to get an error from, from the editor saying, hey, this attribute doesn't exist on any, in any span across the, across the whole trace. So um, I can just remove that because it doesn't exist. And if I type something that is wrong, that uh, immediately um, causes that, that the, the selector to be wrong, I can I can see the error right here. So yeah, that's just what I wanted to show you. Uh, thank you for watching.